everyone and welcome back to Neuropsychology. So in the last video we talked about the basic anatomy of the occipital cortex. We mainly went over um, the medial side and we talked about the calcerine sulcus and the parietal occipital sulcus and then we dove a little deeper into the visual cortices. So we talked about V1 or the primary visual cortex where we have blobs and interblobs and then we talked about V2, where we have the thin, thick, and pale stripes. And lastly, we talked about color processing. In this video, we are going to talk about the uh, pathways um, in the occipital lobe and from the occipital lobe to other brain regions. So this is very complex, so we're going to just break it down um, and only cover um, um, two big streams. So we're going to talk about the dorsal stream, which consists of one pathway, as you can see right here. And we're gonna talk about the ventral stream, which is these two together, um, which is the STS stream and the IT stream, or also called ventral stream. It's kind of confusing, but these two together are the ventral stream. And then lastly, we are going to talk about the fusiform face area. Okay, so, um, in the 60s, it was thought that visual information was hierarch hierarchically organized. So where information goes um, first into the V1, then it goes into the V2, then V3, V4, etc. So it was thought that each of these areas, um, that they did like an additional processing step to what was done in the previous region. However, this view is uh, way too simplistic and instead there is a distributed hierarchical process with multiple parallel and interconnecting pathways at each level. So it gets way complicated. So um, in the wiring diagram of the visual cortex, um, of course it's very complex. However, we can extract few simple principles. So technically it's just three main principles that I want to cover. So the first thing is that V1, which we talked about in the previous video, the primary visual cortex or V1 is the first processing level in the hierarchy. It receives the largest input from the LGN or the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus and it projects to all other occipital regions and also to other brain regions. So in case you forgot, um, in previous video when we talked about the visual system or the re retinal system, we talked about how some information from the retina goes to the LGN of the thalamus. Um, so the LGN receives a lot of information from the retina and then the LGN sends a lot of its information to V1 of the visual cortex. Okay, then we have V2, and V2 is the second processing level. So this area then also projects to all other occipital regions. And after V2, it gets a little bit more complicated. So after the information went through V2, there will be three distinct parallel pathways that emerge. And these can be divided up into the dorsal stream towards the top of the brain, and into the ventral stream towards the bottom of the brain. So let's talk a little bit more about those pathways uh, in a tiny bit more detail. Okay, so after V2, three distinct parallel pathways emerge. Um, and the first one goes to the parietal cortex. So this one stays to the top of the brain. It goes all the way from V1, V2 to the parietal lobe. And this one is called the dorsal pathway or stream. So this includes the dorsal stream and goes to the parietal cortex. And then we have the ventral stream, which goes towards the ventral area of the brain. So it goes towards the bottom of the brain. And the ventral stream consists of two pathways. So we have the STS stream, where STS um, stands for superior temporal sulcus. And we have what I call the IT stream, but in this image it says ventral stream. And IT stands for inferior temporal cortex. So these two together are the ventral stream 
and this one is the dorsal stream. So again, goes to the parietal cortex, and this goes to the superior temporal sulcus, and this goes to the inferior temporal cortex. Okay, so the dorsal stream participates in the visual guidance of movements for grasping. So some neurons can actually also convert information that comes into our eyes into coordinates that we um, can then use for action, such as kicking a ball during a soccer game. And within the ventral stream, the most ventral pathway that goes towards the inferior temporal cortex is really important for the perception of objects, including color and faces. So for example, seeing a book that is on your desk. And the pathway that goes towards the superior temporal sulcus is really important for visual spatial functions, such as perceiving movements. So there are way more pathways that arise from V1 and V2. However, those are not within the scope of this presentation. I do, however, want to go over some regions um, these two streams project to in the next slide. So here you see um, a big list of regions that the ventral stream projects to and the dorsal stream projects to. So many regions in the brain have very specialized function when it, when it comes to visual processing. So we only covered um, the ventral and the dorsal stream in the previous slide but they project to way more as you can see in this picture. Um, but for our scope, the dorsal stream is important for visual guidance and the ventral stream is important for object percep perception and visual spatial functions. So here are some specific regions uh, the ventral and dorsal stream project to. So you don't have to memorize these, but one of them that I do wanna go over because I find it super fascinating is the fusiform face area. So you can see that right here, FFA, fusiform face area. Let's go over this in the next slide. Okay, so the fusiform face area is a very small bilateral part within the fusiform gyrus, and it is located on the ventral side of the brain. So here you see the ventral area of the brain. So this is, you're looking, um, if you have a brain and you flip it upside down, this is what you will see. It's very schematic, of course. And then here in pink, you see the fusiform gyrus on both sides. We went over that in, that in the previous video too when we talked about anatomy. And then here in this like blue dot, you see the fusiform face area. So this area is really important for face recognition. So this area lets you see, differentiate, and remember details about someone's face. And a neuro, uh, neurological condition that is associated with this area is called prosopagnosia. So um, I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt has this. When someone has prosopagnosia, that person is not able to recognize faces. So therefore, it's also called face blindness. And about one in every 50 people have prosopagnosia. So basically, like if you look at this picture, if you have prosopagnosia, you will not be able to tell different faces apart. You are not very sensitive to tiny differences within fa facial features. So for example, if you have two friends with um, similar hair color, similar hairstyle, similar clothing style, similar body type, then it will be very hard to differentiate those two people because you will not be able to tell the difference between their faces. So you will have to recognize people by their hair color or their eye color, um, but also by their style or the perfume they wear, their body form, their height, their clothing style, etc. So this is technically what it looks like when you have pros or when you look at a crowd of people when you have prosopagnosia. All the faces are similar and the only difference you see is differences in hair, differences in clothing, etc.